Chuck, I'm back. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I got some more explain, explaining you to got do. Some explaining to do. <laughs> some explaining to do. So this one is is a phenomenon that we all know intuitively, even okay. if you didn't know what it was called or that it had full mathematical derivation for it. Okay. Right. And it, it's called the Doppler effect. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. And Christian Doppler, I think it was a German. A scientist in the 19th century, mm -hmm. first half of the 19th century, right? And he noted, uh, you know. Oh, by the way, when when you're building the railroad, okay, uh, you can. There are new kinds of experiments you can do, all right? Because a slow moving sort of horse and carriage, you're not thinking of the Doppler effect, okay? Right. <laughs> but when you have a train, that's the clip clop effect. That's clip clop. <laughs> <laughs> so when you have a train it's like wow this thing is moving fast and it's making a noise oh my gosh what can i notice and what he noticed was that trains these were locomotives which make sound the trains that were coming towards him at whatever speed they were had a higher pitch sound than that same train receding from him right okay and he sought to figure out what that was and why. And there's a very simple formula now that says, that says, how fast is the thing moving towards you? Plug it in and we'll tell you exactly how much the frequency has changed. Wow. It's that simple. That's great. Think of sound as, as waves that are emanated, right? The crests, the crest of a wave. So the train emits a sound and there's a, a, a crest and here it is moving towards you at what speed? What do you mean? What speed? At the, the speed of speed. sound. <laughs> no, right. not the speed. Oh, no. it'll move oh, through the, the air at the speed of sound. The wave is moving. The wave is moving at the speed exactly. of sound. Exactly. Right. Okay. So now watch. So that's the crest that hits you, but by the time it makes its next crest, uh -huh. the train is closer to you. Oh. -ho. So the distance between those two consecutive crests is shorter than it otherwise would be if the train were stationary. You're getting a, a, a crest crunch. A crest crunch, sure. And, and, and the opposite is happening as it moves away. It moves away, there's a crest of, of sound that comes to you. The next crest is farther apart. You know, you got a crest stretch. You got a crest stretch. So it's shrunking, it's shrinking up front and stretching out the, out, the, out the back. And so that changes the frequency of the sound. Right. You get higher pitch coming towards you, lower pitch moving away from it. it has nothing to do with the distance from you uh -huh. it only has to do with the speed right pure and simple and so as it's making sounds when the train is right in front of you right in front of you it is making the sound that is native to what the engine makes okay because as it's passing right in front of you it's not getting closer to you and it's not getting farther away right okay the distance is not changing right in that moment. So, this, this is true for anything that's coming towards you and moving away. So, uh, if you ever walked up to the edge of a, a freeway, mm -hmm. okay, you, the cars come one way and go the, come out the other side. Here's the sound they make. You ready? Yes. Okay. Okay. And they don't go, they don't go, no, they go, <laughs> and, and, and that is so natural, but who stops to think about that? Why should a car sound different coming towards you than going away from you? It's the same car. So it's the sound of the tires on the road and the engine and the uh, and air on the on the I was gonna say fuselage um, air on the body of the car. All that makes sound, and whatever that is, it's going to be higher frequency coming towards you than moving away. Period. That's very cool. Now. Before you go any further, clearly you have not seen one of the funniest memes on the internet, which is you making that sound and somebody um, somebody injects that, that image of you going, Meow, and they started off with um, a sign being blown off by the wind. Then you go, and then the sign ends up hitting a weather person. Oh, is that right? 
Okay. <laughs> it seems to me you could put that on practically anything, I um, guess. It's, I got to tell okay. you, it's, it's, <laughs> but it's really funny. I, I got to admit. <laughs> it's a super popular meme on the internet, I'm telling you. Now, here's, here's, here's for me, an interesting fact. Uh, when I visited my first and only NASCAR race, it was at Daytona, and I was ready to hear the cars go, Meow. but then I realized, no, they have microphones all around the track. And the microphones then come through speakers. So you're not only hearing the car that's physically there going around the track, you're hearing the microphones pick up the car sound and then deliver it to you. And since the microphones are not coordinated in any way, it's just one sound of the car. And I was so disappointed. Right. They scrambled the sounds. Yeah. So, so we lost the opportunity to do the Doppler shift experiment. And I was sitting next to a whole bunch of people. I wanted to be like educator physicist and tell them all about it. And I couldn't. Yeah. Because just simply because they, they somehow killed they Doppler. Thought, they killed Doppler by... by but if you watch it on TV, it's still there. Because it's just one camera and it goes... One camera catching it. Yeah. <laughs> You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so that's it, and it works for any wave. So it, it'll work for sound. I mean, it'll work for light waves. So if you have a light wave that's, let's say, naturally red, okay, and it's coming towards you, mm -hmm. red light has longer waves than blue light does. Okay. So depending on how fast it's moving you will shift the spectrum of light from red down the spectrum through the orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. And if it's moving fast enough, it'll go into the ultraviolet and end up becoming invisible to you. For example, wow. if it's just one sort of signature of light that started out as red. And it'll, it, it can go the opposite way. It could start at red, and if it's moving away from you, it could shift out of the red and go into the infrared. Or it could shift out of the ultraviolet into the visible part of the spectrum. So the whole thing can shift just for being in motion. Wow. The Doppler effect. The Dop so that is the Doppler shift. That is the Doppler shift. That's and correct. Cool. That's so now I don't want to seem stupid, but it's already too late for that. Um, <laughs> oh, okay, go on. So when we recognize the Doppler shift, what do we learn from observing that? Like what? Oh, okay, what do you learn? Yeah, we learn whether to give you a speeding ticket. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, the cops with their radar gun—they're <laughs> right. using microwave frequencies to bounce off of your car, and that bounce captures the speed of your car at the moment, changing the frequency of the microwaves. Okay, and so the gun knows what frequency it's sent back, sent to you. You're reflecting a different frequency back. It takes the difference in those frequencies, pops it into the uh, Doppler's equation, and then you get your ticket. And, and that's how you, wow. So, Chuck, here's an interesting fact. The police, when they use their radar gun, right. in order to get the most accurate measurement for you, uh -huh. they need to stand in the road facing you as you approach them. Because <laughs> that would be the actual speed of your car. If they are off to the side of the road, right, then not all of your car's motion is towards the radar gun. Right. Only some of it. Okay? Right. That's, if you do the vector diagram, that's how that works. So the point is, and since the cop is never exactly in the middle of the road, right. if they catch your ass speeding from the side of the road and hand you a ticket for a, a speed, you know you were doing faster speeds than that. Well, absolutely. And the reason why I know that what you said is right is because the guns are calibrated for that difference. Because I got a ticket that was so much money that the lawyer basically said, well, here's the thing. Um, the uh, guns are not truly accurate. So you they have to be calibrated for these per specific and you can ask for the calibration, and maybe if they don't have it, you might be able to get off. Okay, so I read that about how to get off from 
For, for happening? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work. I, I read that as one of the... No, but that calibration has nothing to do with the angle that I'm describing. Uh, okay. 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 It has to do with just... It's, just the, the gun itself. Circuitry. The inner workings of the gun. Okay. The, the inner workings of the gun. Yeah. So if, so if they measure you any place other than standing in the middle of the road, they will get a speed for you that is less than the actual speed of the car. So if you earned your ass a ticket... For having less than the actual speed of the car, you really don't. Then mm. you, you got no case. Well, you, you, you know, I can't no, see. I can't say it. I was going to say that's why you're just supposed to keep going. <laughs> oh, real? Oh, yeah, that works. That, yeah, yes, said the black man. <laughs> on, on the, yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, let, right. let, let's everyone take Chuck's advice yeah. on this Go one. Go ahead, guys. Right. Make sure you're in a white Bronco when you do it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and one other thing, their radar gun depends on the signal that gets reflected back to you, back to them. Okay. Right. Oh. If if you have if you have radar absorbent car material, right, then they can fire the gun at you and no signal comes back to them no matter what speed you're you're driving. And if you have radar absorbent car material, you're Elon Musk. <laughs> so you can afford to pay the ticket anyway. <laughs> and anyway, anyway. Yeah. So then when they say Doppler radar, they must be using radio waves to measure the movement of the storm front that's coming at you. Yes, correct. Correct. Doppler radar is, you know, I think they just I remember when that term came into parlance of, of, of the meteorologists right so doppler radar is they're sending radio waves in getting the reflection back and they'll know things like this generally that you, you use that when there's stuff in the air like right water water rain. droplets yeah. storm systems rain rain so you'll know exactly how fast the rain is coming we have other ways of knowing wind speeds now but i think the concept of doppler radar sounded cool and so they kept it but you're not going to bounce radar off of free air right, right? that's not that yeah. doesn't work you're not gonna okay. you're not gonna radar track a low pressure system <laughs> <laughs> exactly. right unless the low pressure carries water water right right which, yeah. which some, which often they do yeah. actually uh, that's the change in the in, yeah actually that's i should what, have said high pressure because that's high pressure that's system, good exactly. weather exactly high pressure is good weather yeah. you know why it's good weather no nope. because all clouds that want to go there get pushed away by the high pressure <laughs> That's pretty fun. It's I can't literally take it, true. Man. <laughs> just seriously. The pressure. I'm just trying to be a cloud, a cloud, man. I'm just trying to be a cloud. You know? This is this so cool, do what man. clouds do. Exactly. Do what clouds do. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, high pressure, generally no clouds, right. low pressure, all the clouds collect for it. So um, so there you have it. it. That's the Doppler shift. Now there's a there's an aspect of this I'll add here just for for it turns out the expansion of the universe uh -huh. creates a form of a Doppler shift. It's actually a little, it's called a relativistic Doppler shift. Okay. But so here's the, here's the light moving through the universe, minding its own business. And the very fabric of space and time stretches while it's moving through the universe. Mm -hmm. So that gives it a longer wavelength. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the cosmic expansion of the universe gives everything a shift to longer wavelengths just from the expansion. That's pretty wild because I'm trying it to is. get a, a visual and what I'm seeing is like if you were rolling a ball of yarn that had a loop, you know, like when mm -hmm. you snap a rope okay, on a bedspread, but then you stretch the bedspread, the yarn would it'll, stretch it'll take too. It with it. It'll take it with it, correct. Yeah. Wow. Correct. Or or it's just like taking chalk and doing a wave on a rubber sheet and then stretch the rubber and sheet. Stretch the rubber sheet. Oh you, wow, you look at that. The there you go. You, See, I made it very uh too involved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the yeah. yarn and, yeah. and bed sheets yeah. and stuff. What, what, I like what? I like knitting in bed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So oh. yeah, so you've increased the so the Doppler shift of galaxies in the expanding universe right. is all what we say redshifted. To longer wavelengths, right? Okay, right. And that term has stuck, even though if it's giving you red light, it'll shift away from red into infrared. So it's the catch basin for any wavelength that has been increased. And since the farther away you are, the faster you are moving away from us. We were able to use your redshift 
not only is a measure of how fast you're moving, but how far away you are. Uh-huh. We also got, it's synonymous, one-to-one correspondence, almost perfect one-to-one correspondence with distance. So that's it. It's an extra dose of, of um, so in other words, if the galaxy were moving away from us, in the expanding universe, both of those effects would combine with right. each other. Yeah. Which is, oh, that makes sense. Right, right, right. Yeah. So that's why we, in the universe, we don't really call it a Doppler shift. We just call it the redshift. The redshift. Red gotcha. And everything else is a Doppler shift. What's coming towards you, what's moving away. Right. And by the way, we're, we're going to have a collision, a titanic collision with the Andromeda galaxy in five or seven billion years from now. Mm. We, are, we are falling towards each other. We show a blue shift in our light towards each other. You might say, well, it's a galaxy. How come it's not expanding? How come it's not a redshift? It's close enough right. so that its speed falling towards us is greater than the expansion speed of the universe for being so close. Because the nearby things are not expanding as fast yes. as the faraway there things. There you go. Right. And within a certain distance, if galaxies are within a certain distance of each other, they their random motion can override what the expansion of the universe is. And that's what we have with Andromeda and a few other galaxies. That's trippy, man. It's totally trippy. That's trippy. Okay, Chuck, so just for old time's sake, here I go. You ready? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the Doppler effect. <laughs> there you have it. Oh, by the way, and if you want to listen for it, listen for it on sirens and, and fire engines and things right. that are actively making noise as they come down the street. And it's it, you'll see it everywhere. Yeah. And... It's just a fundamental part of what you expect the world to be and when you see it and when you interact with it. So there you go, Chuck, the Doppler shift. I love it. I was going to say you asked for it, but you didn't. I handed it to you. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, this has been another Star Talk Explainer. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Keep looking up.